come in another one. Sure. You know what I mean? So, you know, I'm not even concerned about that, you know. In responding to anything like that, if you know what I mean, it's poppycock, it's child's play. You know what I mean? So I'm teaching them what to do. People are the most important assets. I'm a, innovation and imagination are my truths, and togetherness for a better America is my goal. So I'm really fighting for us, you know what I mean, and bringing people together. And we doing it in a sport where it's competitiveness. At least you get a chance for a return match. But when you use the bomb, the bullet, the knife, and the gun, there ain't no return match. You know what I mean? So I like to see people come back again because you may have off days. If you have off day, I want you to be able to recuperate, give you another chance. You should be king of the fighters. heavyweights in promotions. Is that going to happen again in America? You know what? It's, gonna, it's hard to say. I'm getting ready to may do. I may launch a show. They keep asking me about doing a reality show. I may do a show in search of, you know, to find American heavyweight, you know, go from city to city, take some of the good uh, former champions as my judges, you know what I mean? Something like American Idol, same, same thing, but then do it in the heavyweight division because, as you can see, by me not being able to be in heavyweight venues like I was, look at look at it. You know, I ain't got to ask you about what's happening. Just look at the results. You know what I mean? It leaves you guys hungry, man. You're breaking. You're grasping for straws. And they're talking about Bernard and what he may say. Look at the things Tyson used to say. And I love Tyson. Tyson right out right from this area. Would they fight again? Yeah. Though? Is, is there a clause though in the contract that they would fight if if Hopkins does uh, a rematch clause? Not that I know. Of. Okay. Not that I know of. You know what I mean? But if it's a good fight, that would demand you know public acclaim. Uh, sure. Public acclaim is what I do. I work for the voice of the people, not about what they try to do. You know what I mean? And how to do it. And so all those things are academic with me. You know what I mean? But this one here, you know what I mean? Cloud is going to be in there doing his thing. Bernard is going to be doing his thing. I'm going to be a fan just watching in the new Barclay Arena. The arena right here in Brooklyn, New York. Baby, this is where it all been. Brownsville, right down the street. Tyson, Tyson, hear my cry. B I C T O R Y. This is what it's all about. I'm excited. Don, um, Tavoris said quite a while ago that he thought Bernard was avoiding him. I think that was back before he fought Dawson. He has now gone out and it, it, it almost as a commitment to what he wants to do. He switched trainers, uh, Abel Sanchez. How big of a fight? is this for Cloud's career and how much of an investment have you seen him make uh, in order to get that victory This is the biggest fight of Cloud's career and there's no question about it at this stage. Bernard is very young and, uh, and what makes it so big is the significance of Bernard who is so old and he's done his job and doing so old of the physical body fitness like a guy that's 30 years old. You know what I mean? So he's really doing, it's a great thing for both of them if Bernard should be able to win this fight, which I don't think he will, he would be able to then say he's the oldest guy to win a title, and that would be a crowning achievement for him. But he already has crowning achievements. He has the ability and the skill, the dexterity, the lateral movement, and the capability of winning and staying there in the game like he has at, on top of it for a number of years. So it'll be something for Cloud, who is relatively unknown, 24 and old, undefeated, champion of the world, you know what I mean? But the, he's been blocked by the network by not putting him on. You know what I mean? So let's take it back to where it really the cause is. If, if, the days of ABC, Wide World of Sports, and Showtime, uh, 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 boxing, and, uh, and uh, ABC, CBS, and NBC, you know what I mean? He would have been so colorful there because he's a knockout artist and he's been really doing a great job. Now, since they have taken it and like, he, like they have it, they're playing the game, you know what I mean? So we have to see now, but he, the see when breaks him out in public acclaim. This is the one he must rise to the occasion for. This is an amazing fight, but this is a fight for the people. 12 years ago here at Madison Square Garden, uh, you had Trinidad Hopkins pretty much shock the world and beat him. How much would it mean to you to come back to New York with an undefeated champion and, and to beat Bernard Hopkins when he's trying to accomplish a milestone? Well, you know, Personally New York, I love I love New York. And New York is what we say, we name, it's so great we named it twice, New York, New York. You know what I mean? So being a New Yorker, you know, I really never left. What I do is my heart and mind stays here because this is, uh, this is the hub of the world. Almost every, a little bit of every, bit in, everything in the world is right here in the great city of New York. And so Madison Square Garden, that's my home because that's uh, the Chuck Dolan and, and, and Jimmy Dolan. They call Jimmy Dolan an iconoclastic. I love the guy. He said, you know, I watched him grow up uh, with his father, and, uh, and, uh, and they all come from Cleveland. So it's a lot of love and understanding and togetherness there. But it would be a tremendous, tremendous uh, boost for me to be able to bear witness to Cloud 
making his way in life. You know what I mean? To rise through the occasion and with that devastating power that he has, exemplified right here you know, in, in Barclay Center here because this is what we're all about. And so I want to be able to thank Jay-Z and, and Beyonce, all of them, for contributing and putting their money into an investment that will see the times coming on. This is about Martin Luther King's dream, man. And April 4th, they assassinated him 45 years ago. They killed the body, but the dream lives on. And so now he's moving in those 45 years, you can see the transition in the continued journey. And the reward is in the journey. You got a black man in the White House named Obama. You got guys that are really working at making things happen, black and white alike, you know, working together works. And so it's a tremendous thing this country is exemplifying around the world in spite of those who are of the digressors, those who still continue to live in 1861, and those who still continue to want to deny rights, and they're all blinded by the color barrier which we must knock down. That color barrier is it's an impediment and an obstacle to anything we may or may not do trying to progress. But in the fact of that, even over that, King said, I wanted to dream when little black boys and little black girls would be with little white girls and little white boys, and they would be able to develop and grow, and we own the move, you know. So Martin Luther King, your dream lives. Thank you. Thank you very much.